Okay, my boy says, see you on one. It's uh, second uh, shiur class after the Chagim. You know, I was uh, sitting down, I was getting ready for the shiur. People don't understand how much time and effort goes for this. For every speaker, you know, it goes for them. They have to sit, they have to, they have to concentrate, they have to contemplate on exactly how to get the message proper and straight. Amen. Okay. This week's parasha, parasha Lech Lecha, starts the beginning of the journey of the Avot. Of our fathers. We have three fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, and through them came out Klav Yisrael. And we see that the Torah spends uh, two parashas, two and a half parashiyot, to talk about who? Abraham Avinu. And when we read this parasha, we, there's a lot of confusion, if you really read it, if you learn it correctly. We see in this week's parasha. I tell you the truth, we're not going to get into too far into it because there's so much to speak just on the first pasuk. The first pasuk is like, it's huge. Vayom Hashem and Moshe, and Hashem, uh, sorry, Vayom Hashem and Avram, and Hashem told Avram, Lech Lecha, go for yourself, Mi'artzecha, from your land, Umimoladetecha, and from your birthplace. And from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. First of all, we have to understand something very, very important. Avraham Avinu, at this point of his life, he already left his father's house. He was already traveling. People don't know this until they read Rashi. He was already traveling at the end of the last week's parasha. Parasha no, he talks about it. We have to understand what is really going on over here. What is Hashem telling him? If you if he would be telling him to travel, how would it say the normal common sense? Leave your father's house, leave your birthplace, and leave the land. Instead, it says the total opposite. So from here we can see already, Master, we can see that he's not talking about a physical place. Now, a person, we're gonna see that Abraham Avinu's Avodah, what was his work? Everyone says Ish Chesed, Ish Chesed, 100% he was an Ish Chesed. But his Avoda was pure based on Bitachon. Rabbi say Avram Avinu was 75 years old when Hashem first revealed himself to him, when he first got prophecy. I want you to understand this fact. For 75 years, 74 years, he was serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kibyechol blindly. He went to the yeshiva of Noah and Shem, and he was there. That's all he knew about Hashem. He knew it from his great, 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 great grandfather. He didn't know anything besides it. He never got prophecy. He didn't know for sure. Can you imagine for 75 years you're serving a God that you don't really know? And what's so strange, not like us, that we have parents and grandparents and great grandparents so we can rely on them. But Abraham Avinu had nobody. His father, Terah, was an Oved Avodah Zarah. He was not just an Oved Avodah Zarah. He was a Baal Absalim. He was the man of idol worship. He used to make idols for a living. Everyone knows the story in the Midrash. Abraham Avinu was, there's Machok at 3 or 15. He broke all the idols. And he told his father, look, the big one destroyed all the little ones. And he went crazy. And what are you talking about? He stopped the wolf. Everyone knows this. But really, what is going on? You know, the, the Yenuka says something very interesting. What is this? You know, a person, when he goes to the path of Kodesh Baruch he has to understand, he has to go 100% fully, 100%. 100%. Hashem was telling him, you have to take out the Akkor, you have to uproot everything that you know until now, you have to uproot all the faith that you think you had until now, and start from the beginning. You have grandparents that are alive? Yeah? What are you? Let's say they're 50, 60, 40 even. Tell them to change his mentality. Tell them to start believing in other things. Oh, you crazy? My nigga, she's gonna say, you lost your brain. That could change my mentality. I was doing the what I was doing what I'm doing before you were born. Before your father was born. Let's give you a homogila. 
You come out of me. You don't tell me how to live. But Avram Avinu said no. The Inuka says that Mi when Hashem was telling him leave your land, he was talking about you have to have a total new mindset. You're starting new. You're a new baby. You have to start. Your mindset until now, wipe it all out. Mi moradatecha, from wherever you live, from your birthplace, everything you learned until now, everything you learned, even for the positive, erase it. Press the delete button. You're starting from you, Abraham Avinu. And from your ha- father's house, even if you think you're unworthy of what is about to happen to you, know that you are worthy. I want you to, I want you to understand something. Abraham Avinu was made in the time of Nida. When his mother was having her cycle, she was consummated. Also in Klippa, no? the, the highest Klippa. The Midrash Rabbah says that uh, Abraham, uh, Hashem gathered the angels before he created Abraham Avinu, before he put down Abraham Avinu's Nishama. And he said, should I, should I bring down this Nishama to this world? And the Malachim said, no, don't bring him down. And Hashem destroyed them. And he brought a second group and he said, should I bring Abraham Avinu down? And the angel said, what's the point of me answering you? Because it's You just wiped out the first the first uh, group of angels, you're not going to listen to us. The Satan bowed at Samo and said, send them down. Why? Because if he was made in such a clipper, he's not going to handle it. He's going to break and fall. And is that what happened to Aram Avinu? No. Aram Avinu succeeded. And how do we know this? You, 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 and everyone that's here today is because of Aram Avinu. So let's, let's dissect the story a little bit. Let's understand really what's going on. Abraham Avinu, 75 years old, starts his mission. You know, the Bat Ayn, which is the, the student of uh, Rav Levi Yitzhak Mibarditchev, says that if you take the Gematria of Bitachon, it comes out to 75. If you take the Gematria of Bet, Tet, Chet, Vav, and Nun, it comes out also to 75. Hashem was telling, Hashem was telling Abraham Avinu, now we're starting. From the beginning, you are right now a new baby. Can you imagine such a thing? The faith. You have to start working on what? Your emunah, your bitachon, your faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this is the avod of Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu leaves, he leaves his father's house. He's traveling. And where does he travel? Everyone should ask this question. How did he know where to go? How did he know? The Midrash says that there was Ananea Kavod. And how do we know this? We know this from next week's parasha. What happened? Avraham Avinu takes Eliezer, Ishmael, and Yitzchak, and he's going to do the Akedah, and he goes to Ishmael and uh, Eliezer, and he says, what do you see there? And he said, we don't see anything. He said, stay with the Chamors. You're like donkeys, stay over here. He goes to Yitzchak Avinu, and he says, what do you see? He says, I see the clouds. That's Har Moriah. That's how we know Avram Avinu was following the whole time. What was he following? Unbelievable. Let's get back to this week's parasha. Same one in the desert? Yes. Yes. Ananiah Kavod is Ananiah Kavod. Unbelievable. And next week, hopefully, we'll touch mm-hmm. on that. On Shabbat, that's going to be my big, my big drasha. But I want to get into it right now. Okay, Aram Avinu, 75 years old, he packs his stuff and he starts going. Ah, starts going to where? Eretz Canaan. He's traveling from place to place that he goes. And where does he get to? Eretz Canaan. He gets there. What happens right away? A famine. Imagine, a person that's coming with a new idea that there's only one God, we're a monotheistic people. And what do the people say? Avram Avinu, where's your God? You come? There's a famine. The whole world has food. And there's only a famine where? Where Avram Avinu is. What kind of steer? It's like a slap on his face. Because he has to work on what? He's beat at home. You know what he said? This is what Hashem wants. And then he goes to where? Mitzrayim. As he's traveling to Mitzrayim, he needs to lalum. He needs to rest. He needs to dwell. He needs to sleep. It's a long travel. 
And everywhere that he goes, he says, on credit, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. And the people said, okay, Avram, your God's so great. On credit, no problem. Until he gets where? He gets to Mitzrayim. When he gets to Mitzrayim, he already, that was the Chumash, what is that the Torah says? He sees his wife and he says, now I know that you are beautiful. Right away, the Rishonim say that he got black clothes, he dressed her up in black, and he put her in the bagage, all the way in the back, in the wagon. He said, stay here, don't move. And he's going into Mitzrayim, he gets to Mitzrayim, him a lot, and, his, and his, some of his students. And he goes, and the Mitzrayim there, Rashi says on the spot, the Mitzrayim were black. Sarah and Abraham, Sarai at that point, but Sarah and Abraham, Lord, they were white colored. And he comes and he says, they say to him, empty out your stuff, we have to take, we have to take taxes. You can't just come to our country without paying a tax. Abraham Avinu said, charge me the highest tax. Whatever it is, charge me. Because he didn't want them to see who? His wife. Because he knew they are people of zima, they are people of disgustingness. They like to do things that are inappropriate with married women. They will have a trap of women. Whatever the case is, you said that I didn't say that. Well, that's, what it, that's what it says. <laughs> yes, that's what, it, that's what it implies because they were, they, were, they were not attractive people. And they opened the bagage and what do they see? Sarai Meinu. Beautiful lady. It's our great, great grandmother. And right away, they go and they say, why didn't you tell us you had, had her? It's like, this is my sister! This is my sister! Right away, they take her to Paro. Paro looks at her. Says, she's mine. That's it, Habibi. Ya Habu. This is my tax. My tax is your, is your sister. They ask a huge question. Why wasn't Abraham Abinu scared for Sarah? He was only scared for himself. It's a good question, huh? He should have been scared for her too. The Zoran Kadosh says that. Sarah Imenu was the figure of the Shekhinah. And he knew that Sarah Imenu would not be touched inappropriately because she corresponded to the Shekhinah, to the godly presence. But people don't understand that when a person prepares for Shabbat, he's actually preparing for the Shekhinah to Shabbat. When a person goes and helps his wife, his wife, not his girlfriend, his wife, what happens automatically? He's helping the Shechina. Not the Shechina, not the neighbor, but the Shechina, the presence of God itself. And if you look at this, if we continue in, in the Sipur, in the story, it says that Paro just, just wanted to touch her and right away he felt pain. He knew something was wrong. He knew automatically. He said right away, call this Avraham. Call this, call this man over here. Bring him here. He went. And automatically, Avraham Avinu said, if I would have told you that was my wife, you would have killed me. And Paro said, take her. Here's a bunch of gold and silver and flock. He made him rich. Paro made him rich. And you know what? Take my daughter too. It's better for my daughter to be washing the dishes in your house that has priorities of life than being in the palace of Paro, which over there is full of filth, full of garbage. A person can live his life and say, I want to do tavot, I want to do desires, I want to do shtuyot. And then he sees a guy that's learning Torah and he says, look at him, what does this guy have? He sits and learns Torah. What does he have? Look at me, I'm living life. He's missing the point of life. The point of life is to work on your midot, not to be a behemoth, not to be an animal. And that's exactly what Avram Avinu was doing. Avram Avinu left, and he was going back to Eretz Kedan. And what happened? All the places that he stayed and took, they gave him on credit to sleep there. When they saw Bat Paro, they automatically knew Avram Avinu was big stuff. And they retract. They said, your God is the true God. 
And like this, whenever he was traveling place to place, place to place, place to place, Abraham Avinu was the man of Chesed. We see, I have a beautiful story for you. The, the Admor Mitchanabal, this is talking back in Europe, he was a master Tamid Hacham. But he, there was one mitzvah that he was very into. It's called Pidyon Shivuim. People that are in jail, he used to, we, we don't have this as much in our times, we do, but not as much as in their times, to be in jail for a Jew, there people would die there. People would stay in jail for, the, for life just to pay, because they don't have enough, enough finances to get the person out. The halacha says you can even sell a, sef, a sefer Torah for this. And one time, the Admo Mitchell went into jail. And with him was another Jew. And he looked at him, the other Jew looked at the, the Rebbe from Chernobyl and he said, you see, you want to know why you're in jail? Because until now, when you were running around helping to get stuck out for the person in jail, you didn't actually feel the pain of the Jew in the jail. You were doing it because it's a mitzvah. Now you're in jail, why? Because you're going to run twice as fast. Because you actually are experiencing what it is to be in jail. Avram Avinu, when he went to go to do chesed for people, to help them, when the people, when he was doing it under credit, people didn't treat him nice. Who are you? You're a nobody. You're a crazy guy with crazy ideas, one guy. Now that you became rich and you went through the struggles, you're going to start treating people different. And we see this in next week's parasha, how he says, He said, I'll make you a little food. And he makes him a meal and a feast. Why? Because of his own experience. A person goes and is mishtolel. He goes and complains, Rabbi, why is my life like this? Why is my life like this? The Hafez Chaim says that a person has to understand that everything that happens to him in his life is from HaKadosh Baruch 100%. And if he doesn't believe it, he's a kofer bikar. The challenges you have right now and today is only because tomorrow that challenge is going to help you. It's like a person that's going to become part of the Navy SEALs. And he wants to be the head of the Navy SEALs. And what does he go through? Hell week. That hell week, maybe 5% of the army can pass that. And people break their feet and they break their bones and they don't sleep and they get pneumonia and they get sick and they still pass it. Why? Why are you going through so much hell? Because I need to in order to get to that level of experience to go to get somewhere big in my life. A person has to understand that all his shame, all of his difficulties that he's going to go through, it's only for one reason. To make you a greater person tomorrow. You cannot run away from the, from the hardship. You have to embrace it and take it as a challenge. It's a challenge today for me. For me to become better and greater tomorrow. So Abraham Avinu goes. And. He's going back. He's in Eretz Israel now. He's back in Eretz Kenai. And who, who's with him? Lot. His nephew. And everyone knows the story. The, the Chumash says it wasn't Lot and Abraham that was fighting. It was the shepherds, the workers were fighting with each other. You know, people, people have an idea of, of what it is to be Choser B'Tshuva. You know, Abraham Avinu also had difficulties when he, when he was believing in Hashem. His own family members made fun of him. Imagine someone takes you out of a hardship and he gives you and you learn with him and he gives you everything. And then he says, listen, you have to go your own way. How are you going to feel? You're going to feel bad. I, I breathe you. I live you. How are you telling me to leave you? How? Lot didn't say that. Lot said, no problem. Abraham, Magdion, my uncle, Jaja, you, wherever you go, you, wherever I'm going to pick, you're going to go the opposite way. That's what Abraham Aminu said. Wherever you pick, I go the opposite way. Sometimes, I know when people start to get religious, they say, you know, my uncle wants to hug me, or my aunt wants to hug me, or my in-laws, or my husband when I'm in Nidah. What is this? The Torah says you're not allowed. Even if your relatives come and want to bash you, the hardest test is when your own family hits you in the head. When your father and mother hits you in the head. When your grandparents hit you in the head, mentally, of course. And they say, why do you need this? 
Look good. Do this. Make money. Who needs Torah? Don't worry, you get to my age. You're already full. You worked on Shabbat. You have big savings. Then go to Torah. Avram Avinu had the same challenge, Rabbi Isai. He had the exact same challenge with you going through. Avraham Avinu had the same thing. But you know what? He still lived in Bidahom. He lived in full trust in HaKadosh Baruch. He says, I am not giving up. Ya yeah, Habibi. Even if my nephew is like this, my own family is spitting in my face, I'm still going to go weiter in my life. I'm not gonna help. I'm not gonna make it that this man is gonna help me, help, help keep me back from my avodat hakodesh. And that's one of the greatest tests that a, a person that's coming was it in tshuva. That's one of the greatest tests that he has. The greatest. He can't let go of what he had when he just started. Before he started to come close to Torah mitzvot, the Gemara in Masechet Sota says. That when a woman, before the, the, the Mishnah goes in, in a little detail, that before they give her to drink from the water that has the Yudkei Vavke, that they erased Hashem's name, they ask her a simple question. They said, before we, we, we go through this process, if she admits, that's it, they just get a divorce and they go their way. Maybe you remember, you think this is a joke. Maybe in your childhood, in your childhood, you know, they taught you that this is okay thing to do, to sleep around. Why did they use that Lashon, the Gemara said? The Rishonim asked, why, they, why does the Mishnah say that they use that kind of way of teaching? And it's because in a, in a young age, if you instill to your children what's important and what's not important, it's going to grow with them. It's going to grow that this is important for me and this is not important for me. Torah is important for me. Shalom is important for me. Loving Hashem is important for me, or only money? They're all important, but what is the priority of a person? That's why Chinuch, that's why when Abraham Avinu, when Hashem told him, Lech Lecha, he told him, Me'artzecha, Me'ortecha, Me'bet Avicha. That you have to uproot everything. And to the point that he was willing to leave his own nephew behind. Because you cannot let someone hold you back from achieving greatness. Later, he saved Lot in this week's parasha between the war of the four kings and the five kings. He saved his own nephew. Nimrod, which we're going to talk about, Nimrod was one of the conquerors, one of the four kings. He caught Lot because he looked like Avram Avino. He said, Ah, I got him now. He thought he escaped the fire, but I caught him now. Until Avram Avinu came and said to his Eved, Eliezer, he said, come, we're going to war. When the kings saw him come to fight, they saw an old man with a stick. They said, what are you going to do, Ya Habibi? You can barely walk. He said, don't worry. I have bitachon in HaKadosh Baruch We're going to win this war. What did he do? You know how kids go, they play with the mud. He goes to his... Uh, Servant Elias, he said, make me some uh, nice mud balls. <laughs> make me some dirt balls. We're going to play catch. Everyone thought he was crazy. This guy is mental. Avram Avinu, you lost your brain. <laughs> What's wrong with you? He took the mud ball, the dirt. <laughs> Rashi says, from that came spears and arrows were flying out. Until he won the war. And the nations called him Nasi Elokim, or the Prince of God. The Prince of God is walking upon us. Why? Because he didn't give up. He had pure faith in the Baruch Hu. You know what it is to be, to leave everything and to start all over at the age of 75? You know, we read in Shimon Esther something very, very beautiful. And it's a chaval that we don't, we don't pay attention to it. It's, it's, it's basic, basic targum, basic translation. Melech Ozer Moshe Omagen, the first, the first bracha. Baruch Atah Hashem, Magen Abraham. What is this Magen Abraham? What is this shield of Abraham? What is it? Faith in the Kaddish Baruch Faith in the Kaddish Baruch Do not doubt God. 
Once you start doubting God, that's when you think you're in control of your life. People have certain hardships. And every time, I, I forgot where it's written, I know it for a fact, I forgot where it's written, I have to find it, it's in my notes. He says, if anyone has a hardship in life and they say, Elokei Aram, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov, help me, he right away has Yeshua. Right away Hashem helps him. Because these are our pillars. We come from these three men. They are the giants of the world. And today we're learning about Aram Avinu's Avoda. It's not that he was just an Ish Chesed. He was a Baal Bitachon to another level. What age did he have a brief milah? Nine years. A boy said, can you imagine being 99 years old? When I went to learn how to do, uh, to be a mohel, I went to London. I had a lot of rebellion here, but to actually get physical experience, I went to London. It happened to me that I went to do a brief also for an elderly person. He was in his 20s. I had older than that. I never saw an old, an old, an old a, someone so mature sweat like this. The guy was shaking. He was shaking. You know what I'm shaking? You know how the Ashkenazim do the laugh? Now this far in the Ashkenazim, like they're mopping the, the ear. They're like that. The guy was worse than that. He was shaking like this. He said to, to me and to, the, to, my, to my teacher, he said, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm scared. And the guy said, don't worry. It's going to not. We're going to put such a, um, um, anesthetic. anesthetic. You're going to be fine. You won't feel a thing. And then he comes to me. He's like, after an hour, trust me, he's going to feel. But we won't be here by then. <laughs> That's what he told me. We won't be here by then. But he'll feel it. The guy was shaking. Imagine being 99 years old. Sitting on the bed. And doing the breach. To yourself, without any anesthetics. Why? Because Hashem told me to do so. Mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. The talk of a Jew is based on the Brit Milah that he has. If a person's Brit is not holy, is not Kadosh, Oy vavoy lo. A person is born, he has a tzelem. Tzadik lamed men. The Yenuka says, when a person keeps his breed, his full aura of his tzelem is around him. And it's mashpia on him a great power. He can receive more kochot min shaman. And why is the breed so important? I'll tell you why. Because Avraham Avinu, that was one of his tests. Abraham Avinu did it unconditionally. He didn't ask why. I'm already an old man. God, what is it like? I'll do my kids. I'll do my kids. My kids? No problem. Me? Why do I need this? I'm 99. What is this? Hashem said, no. Yitzhak Avinu is coming soon. You better be mahu. You better be circumcised. The preparation of your kids starts with you, my friend. If you're not going to start the preparation now, then your kids are going to have to have that effect that you couldn't accomplish. But if you start accomplishing and working on your midot and becoming a better person, you're making it easier for your kids. And how do we know this? When we read Bechot HaShachar, what do we say in Berkat HaTorah? Us, our kids, and our grandkids. Why do we go three generations? Why? My Rabbi Amish tell me because if in three generations you can break a bad midah, it will not affect the kids. Why does the Avod start from Avraham and Zakriyakov? Because them three were able to destroy their bad midot and then affect their kids. That's why we are here today. We have Gomei Chesed, we have Rachamim, we have, we have uh, Baishanut. We're, we're people of, of respect, of shy. We're kind people. 
and we're and we're merciful. Who do we get these attributes from? Well, it came from the air. It came from Abraham Avinu. He instilled it in our DNA. And that's why we are who we are. So when a person says, I can't achieve rabbi, it's too hard. No, that's an excuse. Abraham Avinu was consummated in a time of Nida, when his mother was bleeding. He, was, he, he became, his, he was formed at that time. He kind of said, I was made in the most disgusting time. My father is an idol worship. I'm done. He said, no. Even though all this revolves around me, I'm going to sit like a Baruch Hu. I heard a beautiful story. You know, there is no Jew that's a Kofir Vikar. It doesn't exist. There isn't a Jew that doesn't believe. Every Jew believes. Every Jew believes. They find excuses why they don't believe. But every Jew believes. When I tell you a story I heard today, I was... I loved it so much. I said, I have to share. There was a Jew that lived in uh, Rishon Etzion, in a moshav in Rishon Etzion, in a town, a small little village in Rishon Etzion. This town, they were very makpid not to build a shul. They were very... Kofrim lived there, people that are lefties. They don't want nothing to do with God. Nothing. There was a, there was a, a couple there, an elderly couple, that had a son that was in the army and he died. He died for the sake of, of, of the Jewish people. And to the extent they were such kofrim, on the day they buried him, they brought a, a karaoke band to sing by the, by the grave. And they were, they, were, they were happy and talking like nothing ever happened. It just, it's just a cover-up of all the pain that's really inside. And there was a guy that lived in the Moshav. He said, listen, I feel so bad. Maybe I'm going to go knock on the door. I'm going to ask. Maybe I can do a minkar beat, you know. I'm going to go menach and mavel them. I'm going to eulogize them, you know, make them feel good. He knocks on the door. Who opens the door? The mother. The father sitting watching TV like nothing happened. And he says, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. You know, if, if I could, to make a minyan here for your son, for his neshama. Short fuse, on the spot. Who do you think you are? You fool. Why don't you understand? We're happy. Everything's okay. Get out of our property. And she mopped him. And he was there. He was hamum. He was shocked. He was so embarrassed. Closed the, she closed the door in his face and he left. But it still bothered him. He sits down that night. He takes out a pen and paper and he writes a three-page letter explaining, do we know you're hurt and we're sorry for your thing and your son died for such a good cause. And don't forget that what he died for is to be a Jew. He died for this country, Bonagid, right? He folds it up, he puts it in an envelope. And he's looking in the middle of the night, no one's there. He throws it in the mailbox and he runs for his life. The next day, he's walking. And suddenly he sees in that house, a whole bunch of people there. A whole bunch of people. And he's getting close, he wants to see what's going on. Suddenly, the mother of that kid that died starts to scream. Come here! Imagine, imagine a whole bunch of people, you know, you, oh my God, <laughs> what just happened? You can't move, you can't run. You're like, okay, he gets there. And she sees the guy. And she said, I read your letter. And she started to cry and she says, I want you to make a minyan in my house. Even though I don't believe, I want you to make a minyan. He was shocked. Shocked? How is this possible? <clears throat> right away, he makes a pirsomet, he makes an ad, he puts it all over the, the village, the town. He says that day there was 300 people that came to their house to pray Mincha and Arvid. 300 people. Kiddush Hashem. The mother saw this. She already went to the Choser B'Tshuva. There isn't a Jew that doesn't believe. You want to know why? Because Abraham Avinu put it in us already. 
To be a non-believer doesn't exist. The Balatanya says something very interesting. You now people think everyone knows a Jew is willing to die as a Jew. We know stories among stories, inquisitions, Holocaust, everything. But he says something very fascinating. He said the same way how we're willing to die to be a Jew, we have to start living to be like a Jew. It's not good enough to die for your Judaism, for Hashem. We have to live it too. I made a uh, conclusion. No more mixed weddings, right? The next day, his friend getting married. <coughs> mixed wedding. Rabbi, how can I leave? Rabbi, hey, it's my friend. Friend? Oh, Lama, Rabbi, there's my friend, the Habibi. There, there, there is no friends. The only friend is going to be there. You're going to see who's screaming louder in Gitinam. That's it. Is it you or him? It's going to be a competition. Not knowing it's a competition. Rabbi, she's my aunt. She's 80 years old. So what? So what? Her voice died. When, when, is, when, is the, when is the stop sign? Rabbi, it's just my wife's relatives. Like, I don't care if she dances with them in a mixed wedding. What? The Gemara says, Ain abatrupus larayot. And these kind of things, the Satan can, out of nowhere, turn you on and you're done. You're stuck. The person that you thought was the most ugliest person becomes the most beautiful in your eyes. How? When the Satan wants to get you, he's going to work overtime. You know when he can't get you? When you're also working overtime. Stop finding excuses for growing in Torah. Stop it already. You're not tired living the same way every year? You come back to the class, the same thing. I'm going to change this year. Same thing the next year. I'm going to change this year. Same thing. Enough. Die. Enough. Rabbi, I want to get married. Okay? Find your shidu. Find your shidu. Talking to him, he said, Rabbi, you know what I really want? I want someone that really inside, they're not religious, but outside they're religious. What's that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? No, she should be Tanua. She should be top of the line, you know, Kashrut. But she has that little wickedness in her. That if we go somewhere to a vacation, she want to go to the clubs with me. And if we want to hang out at night, we'll enjoy doing other things, explore different worlds. I want her to be a baddie at this. <laughs> Freaked out. Freaked out. I said, what? I said, you're never gonna get married. How, how, do you, how, how do you come to this conclusion? How is this possible? And then what do we do? We complain all day, all night. Ah, my life's like this. No, you have, baby, your priorities are like this. That's why. Your priorities are not factually straight in your head. That's why you want both worlds. But you can't get it. You can't, it's impossible. We learn this from Adam and When you go to do something, you have to do the taqdidya from the bottom of your heart. You can't give up not even one second for the Yitzhara. Not even one ounce of a second. The Bala Yenuka says, the Bala the Yenuka says, Tzadik Kadosh Elyon. He says, a person has to serve Hashem with his heart. But learn Torah with his brain. What does that mean? How does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? I tell you what it means. When you learn Torah, it has to be factual. You can't bring emotions to the Torah learning. What's mutal is mutal. What's asu is, masu, is asu. Whatever is allowed is allowed. Whatever is not allowed is not allowed. But how you serve, how are you going to say the shakol? This is shakol. I can't say mezon on this. I can't, but Rabbi, I want to see Mizona. Rabbi, I, I, I have to see Mizona. That's, 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 work. that's doing Torah according to your heart. According to the brain, this is Shakol. How do I use my heart at this point? How am I going to make the Bracha? 
Am I going to say Baruch Shakol and drink? Or am I going to say Baruch? Blesses you, Hashem, the creator of the world. Atai, you, only you, the or insult. Hashem. Hayahoveviyeh. Elokeinu melech haolam. Our God, the God of the whole world. Right? You're going to say, once you say the Brachai, you're not going to even want to drink already. Shehakol niyabudvaro. That everything was created from your will. Everything. And then you take a sip. And if you do to the heat lavut with an excitement, forget about it. You're like in a different level. And that's how you have to serve Hashem. And you know what? That's the way I'm going to serve Hashem. If there's one thing you're going to take home, is you have to understand in order to grow, you have to work on your midot. You have to uproot all that things that you've been taught that is not good. I don't know what everyone said. Everyone's taught it's different. And know that his priority has to be a Kodesh Borko Kuchabrihu Khadhu. My priority in my life is Hashem. It automatically, I want you to understand him, like, a person that puts his priority of his life a Kodesh Borko automatically, but not a fake, a real, automatically, this affects how he acts towards his parents how he acts towards his wife, how he acts towards his kids, how he acts towards everybody. People start to like him. Why? Because there's no more I'm doing it because of me. I'm doing it because of Kodesh Baruch who told me to do so. Hashem commanded me and I will serve him. That's what we have to remember. Is it difficult, ya Habibi? It is, don't say no, it is. Don't lie to yourselves. It's difficult. Is it well rewarding? Yes. It's super well rewarding. It's a phenomenon well rewarding. Why? Because tomorrow, when the mumbo jumbos are going to come out of public school, and your kids are going to come out of the cheder, out of the yeshiva, you're going to see a difference between one guy going to his father, what's up, what's up, what's up, how you doing, pops? I was work, and another kid comes and kisses his father's hand and says, Shalom Aleichem, stands up when the father walks up in the house. He says, can I get you something? Can I help you with something? Two different, two different worlds. But I like it when my son's gangster. I like it. It's cool. He got the nice watch, he's driving in the nice car. He's gangster, he's daddy. Ah, he's daddy, all right? So he should treat you like a homeboy, right? He should treat, he should treat you like, like he's one of yours. What is the respect? No father likes that. You're going to see when you're going to be fathers. You're going to want your kid to have pure respect towards you. And that's only going to happen if you have the same thing towards your parents. It's only going to happen if you're going to work on your midot. That's the only way over time. Stop finding excuses. Start finding solutions. Find a way to become a better person. I'm going to finish with one last thing. There was a story in the time of Moshe Feinstein. But Moshe Feinstein was the Godlador of America. He was the head. He had a Bachur in his yeshiva, Lower East Side. And this Bachur, his father was very wealthy. Korach was not even as rich as him. Now his father was already getting old. And he asked his son, he said, what do you do with your day, Habibi? What do you do? He said, I learned Torah, Abba. He said, what is this Torah? He said, come to the yeshiva one day. Come to the yeshiva. Okay. And this kid in his mind, my father's going to the yeshiva. Kakoya yeshiva. He's sitting, he's learning suddenly. His father walks in. Up, sits him down, introduces him to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. He says, Wow, you're such a of a son. And the father said, I'm giving you one hour. He said, Let's learn Gemara. He opens up a Masechet Berachot and he starts. 
Mehr mal sagen, ich will wait. Who will be the mother? And it went. Amorai, Tanai, who are they? Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and he started going, going. Suddenly, he said to someone, stop. <coughs> One hour passed, I have to leave. The son said, listen, I tried. I cannot tell my father how I feel when I learn, but I tried. The next day, the father walks in again. The son's hamun, shot, come again. He said, I told you I'm going to give this a try. Let's go. One hour. And like this, for close to one year, he's learning with the son. After one year, he just finishes the first daf in Masechet Berachot. His son said if his father didn't understand one thing, if he didn't know it by heart, he wouldn't continue. It took him one year to finish one daf. Do you know what that is? After one, after five minutes, if you don't, if you don't do uh, half of the daf, you already don't want to learn anymore. <laughs> the guy for one year learned the one daf. It's a page back and forth. He closes the book after he finished the daf, and he says. I want to make a siyu hadaf. Even if it. The son looks at the father and says, Siyu hadaf? We do siyu masachet here. We don't do siyu hadaf. He said, I'm making siyu hadaf and I want you to invite Rav Moshe Feinstein. The God of Lador, he said, he told his father, he's not going to come. He said, I want you to invite him. Okay. He goes to Rosh Hashiva, Birav, Bima. He's scared, you know, it's a waste of Rosh Hashiva's time. He said, You know, my father, it took us one year to finish the daf. He's making a big siyum masachet and he wants you to come. Now, Moshe Feinstein looks and he said, I'm gonna come. The Talmud popped out his eyes. He said, What? <laughs> For a daf? He said, I'm gonna come. So the Gavir, the father, comes. He gets the biggest hall, invites all of his friends and his family, everybody. And he stands up and he said, imagine, this is, it was a rich man. We're talking back, back in the 60s, in the 50s. And he goes to all of his friends and he says, I had many pleasures in my life. But like sitting down and learning the daf of Gemara that I finished, it took me one year. Like this kind of pleasure I never experienced in my life. I was eager to go learn every day. And he tells all of his friends, you're wealthy, you're rich. Find time to learn Torah. It's a total different pleasure. It's a pleasure that's unexplainable. And Rav Moshe Feinstein gets up and also gives a small little drasha. They finish, they go home, end of story. The next day, the mother calls the son and he says, she says, your father's not moving, he's not waking up. Right away, he calls Hatzala, Hatzala comes on the spot, pronounce him Yiftal, he's dead, he passed away. Right away, they do the Levaya. And Rav Moshe Feinstein says, I want to go to the Levaya. Rav Moshe Feinstein gets up and says, Rabotai, the Gemara says, there's a person that buys his Olam Abba all his life. There's a person that buys his Olam Abba in one second. <clears throat> and then he adds, he says, there's a person that buys his Olam Abba with one daf of Gemara. A voice say, we're going we're in the new year. Tafshin pei gimel. Don't fool yourselves. Take Gemara, take a Mishnah, take Halakha and start learning every day. You must learn every day. You must sit down and break your head. If you don't have the Torah, you don't have anything in your life. You're an empty person. Empty. Zero. Zilch. But if you have the Torah, you have everything. 
כי הם חיינו ואורך ימינו. This is our life. When we have this, no one can touch us. Nobody. Have a good night, Allah.